Hello, this is Colin Jones speaking to you on the last day of January 2011 from my little flat in the west end of Rill. Jones Towers I call it. On this channel we'll be looking at the four Rill books written by Bill Ellis starting today with his first Rill in Old Picture Postcards by Bill Ellis and Frank Selby. The late Frank Selby was a local journalist and a member of the council. The other fella, Bill Ellis, is coming now. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> okay. I just opened the book and it says this book belongs to Temptations Tea Rooms and it's got an inscription here to Yvonne best wishes always Bill Ellis Temptations Tea Rooms, tea rooms. next door to Sidolis on Wellington Road what is it now it's then? now Davy Jones's locker right lifeboat day in High Street 1916 and it shows part of High Street near the junction with Russell Road on the top right and we can see from the left, E.B. Jones's, which was a local chain of grocers, and then Boots in its original position, where Body Care is now. Yes, and on the corner of Russell Road used to be Cooper's. What was Cooper's? Cooper's was a general store, so you could, they had a coffee machine as you walked mm. in, you could smell it as they were making the That's coffee. That's on what I used Up to on the call corner. the Oxfam Oxfam corner. Oxfam corner now, yeah. Oxfam's gone now as well. Yeah. And it's a nice shot because down on the bottom right you've got a boy in a bath chair who might be from the children's, children's hospital. hospital. Yeah. Here's a shot I took of the same part of High Street a week or two ago. It doesn't really compare, does it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not sure I'll say that. Another picture. I'm always asked about this place, this tower. Penadon Tower on the left there because it looks so out of place in real. It looks like a piece of an old castle or something. Yeah. And it's a Coast Guard station. Coast Telegraph it? station. And somebody said uh, there used to be another town on the next corner as well. Oh, right. There was two of them but yeah. no photographs of it. No. Well, I've only ever seen one, even in the earliest. Yeah. So it does look like one of a pair. It's one of a pair, to, yeah. They come to mention it, but maybe they never got as far no. as building you. No. And to the right of it, tea rooms where they've gone. Tea rooms, yeah. Here's the promenade opposite East Parade, and we've got that conical. Yeah. Here's the Midland Hotel. Yeah, used to say in the, the nicest in the hotel in Ville. The Midland, yeah. yeah. On the prom there, we've got the Conway Memorial, Memorial. Fountain. Yeah, and Punch and Judy there, Professor Green. What date is this? 1930s. Oh, 30s. Yeah, 30s. Yeah, it's good. We've got pictures of Don Spendler, the famous footballer, taken in 1959 and 1960. The 1960 picture, he was being presented with a football for scoring the 600th goal for real during the 1960 season. Yeah. Incidentally, his funeral is today, 31st of January, 2011. Mm. He was 90. Just as a finisher, picked out this picture of the William Roberts corner of High Street and... Uh, Brighton Road. And Brighton Road in those days was known as Shipley Street. Right. Well, if he stopped food for cattle, um, yeah. it's got their straw dealer and everything. It's yeah. all a bit rural, so the farmers must have come in to Rill come in. Yeah. for um, provisions from Rill. Yeah. You don't think of Rill as having no. a rural place. <laughs> and on the bottom left there, coal cart uh, with a blurred coalman because he must have sneezed. Yeah. Probably all the dust and everything. <laughs> well, there's a picture I took a week or two ago, the same corner. And, it, and what struck me about this was the buildings to the left of the William Roberts building are the same height now, but in the old picture they were two stories, Close not down. three. Yeah. The black and white pictures are all in this book. Real in old picture postcards by Bill Ellis and Frank Selby, published in 1987. 87. You won't be able to buy this now, but it should be in libraries and will pop up on auction yeah. sites from time to time. This is Colin Jones, 
Welcome back to Jones Towers in Sunny Rill. We've already talked about a book by Bill Ellis and Frank Selby. Today we're going to talk about Bill's first solo effort, which was published a couple of years earlier. It's called Seaside Entertainment, A Hundred Years of Nostalgia. Or Seaside Entertainment in Old Photographs, Rill and North Wales. 1868 to 1968, A Hundred Years of Nostalgia, Part 1, by Bill Ellis. All we need now is Bill Ellis. Hello. <laughs> now, this book, it's a Part 1. Yes, there's, there's never a Part 2. And you've inscribed it to your mum and dad. Yes. Were they real people? No, my mum Edith was real, but my dad was from Grad. Okay. Right. The book touches on seaside entertainment in Colwyn Bay and Llandidno, but we'll go straight to some of the real pictures. Here's a real picture from the book. I've enhanced it slightly for the sake of clarity. Who is it? It's the H. Williams's Many Men. And they were on the minstrel pitch on the sands opposite High Street from when to when? Yeah, from 1899 to 1906. It was a big crew, wasn't it? It was. It used to be 13, but uh, looking at this one, I think there's about 16 in this. And which one is E.H. Williams? He's the one in the middle with the moustache sitting next to the young lady. And directly in front of her, we believe, is uh, Jack Hilton. There's the boy on the left, and a picture of Jack Hilton in 1930. He was a very popular dance band leader in the 1930s, on the radio a lot. And later on he became a founder of Decca Records and later on still a founder of ITV, producing shows by Shirley Bassey, Morecambe and Wise and others. He died in 1965 in London at the age of 72. Another picture, this one of the Pier Amphitheatre, the original wooden structure which was rebuilt in brick. In when, the 1920s. In the 1920s. And yes. later on, much later on, it became... Yeah. The Gaiety Theatre. And the old, uh, the old amphitheatre had a unique heating system. Everyone going in was given a fisherman's friend. You can't do it. I often get asked where the pier was. And I usually say it was at the back of where the sea aquarium is now. Here's a picture now of the Queen's Theatre in West Parade, not far from the top of High Street. This version of the theatre was there from 1926 to 1960. And it was owned by Real Entertainments Limited, who also owned the Plaza and Regal Cinemas in High Street. And now here's a picture of the same entrance today. I took this picture a couple of years ago and the entrance still looks the same, with a nice big queue over the top. Now these are the uh, Piedo Company from uh, Adler and Sutton's Gay River Company, taken on the uh, promenade East Parade. Uh, yes, I see the sand hills there on the left. And a couple of these wrote a song about Will, didn't they? They did, yes, which is on the back cover of the book. It starts like this. On the western Welsh coast is a town of much boast. You know the place well, it is Rill. Where everyone's happy and each girl and chappy of fun and delight have their fill. Boom, boom. boom. Hello again, this is Colin Jones speaking to you on Wednesday 13th of July 2011 from Jones Towers in Sunny Rill. Lovely sunny day. And we are stuck indoors to discuss another book by Bill Ellis. This one, Entertainment in Rill and North Wales, published 1997. And it begins with the lines, Where are the shows of yesteryear when Pierrot's were a draw? The hand of fortune on the pier, and what the butler saw. Uh. 
Well, now again. Are we ready then? The book covers all the major real cinemas and theatres, including this one, the old pavilion, which opened in 1908. And here's the demolition. What year was that? Uh, 1974 when it was demolished, yes. And we still miss it, don't we? We do. That's a symbol of the town. In the book there are pictures of early seaside entertainers, back to Victorian times. This one here, Will Parkin, born 1887, in nice costume in that shot. Where is he in this group shot? He's on the back on, uh, on the horse. That was uh, taken in 1928 at the Coliseum, and when he was with his uh, company, the Super Optimists. And the Coliseum was open air then? All open air then, yes. And here's one of my favourite pictures from the book, Will Parkin towards the end of his life, with all his memorabilia. Yes, which he uh, wrote himself, all the scripts for it, yes. Mm. He used to write pantomimes and yes. uh, bits and pieces, didn't he? There was more to him than just being a clown. Well, he was, yes, uh, actor and producer. Yeah. yeah. Here's a picture I took of the Coliseum Theatre around about the year 2000. It was already closed by then. It was all over for the Coliseum. Aubrey Phillips had been in there for a few years doing yes. things. Here's what's there today. It's part of Drift Park, and the wall at the back is said to be the back wall of the Coliseum Theatre, and I'm not sure I believe that, but anyway, it's nice that it should remain a performance space of some kind. And on the wall at the back, there are some pictures of some old real scenes printed onto tiles on the wall itself, and that's quite interesting. Here's Billy Mandis, who was at the amphitheatre for a very long time. From 1921 up until he died in 1950, and then Mrs Mandis took over until 1962. And his uh, concert party was the Quaintesques. The Quaintesques. Mm. Here he is as a young man. In the First World War he entertained the troops. He was a sub-lieutenant in the Royal Naval Division. He was a female impersonator, and here he is, all dressed up with his boys. This would be taken when? This would be about 1921 in the amphitheatre. This is the original uh, company. He was very stylish and quite convincing, really. Yes, and the, the photograph shows how dainty and uh, graceful he could make himself. The amphitheatre was at the shore end of the pier, where the Sequarium is now. And here's a shot of the interior. And here is the amphitheatre as we remember it. It later became the Gaiety Theatre. Here's a later picture of Billy Manders, taken about 1935 with his dog Chick. And later he had a dog called Nelson because it had only one eye. Here's another picture from the 1930s showing the Quaintesques in their traditional Piero costumes, pom-poms and ruffles. Here are a couple of the Quaintesques. Who's that on the left? That is Doug Leonard, who used to do a ventriloquist act. He was the owner of the Mermaid Hotel by the railway station, later became Costigan's. And on the right? That's Al Dixon. He was the longest serving member of the Quaintesques. Started in 1944 and he stayed with them until the end. And he popped up on TV, didn't he, later? Yes, he played Walter in Emmerdale Farm. The Quaintesques show was mainly comedy and music. And here they are in 1958. From left to right? Colin Campbell, Christine Campbell, they were brother and sister. Al Rogers, Brian Patton on the drums, Jimmy Duncan on washboard, J. Barry on piano, Al Dixon, Alan Wren and Jimmy Patton. A member of the Quaintesques for a while was this character. This is Johnny Dallas, a very different kind of female impersonator. Yes, totally different from Billy Mandis. He's more in the style of Lily Savage. And he uh, passed away last year, Johnny Dallas, didn't he? Yes, last mm. year, yes. Mm. He used to appear at the Queen's and under the title Mr. Rill. Lots more information and many more pictures in the book Entertainment in Rill and North Wales by Bill Ellis. Thanks, Bill, for coming in. Right. We've got one more book to do. Right, OK. Here we are again. This is Colin Jones at Jones Towers in Sunny Rill. It's Saturday 17th of December 2011. And we're here to talk about the fourth and most recent book about Rill by Bill Ellis. 
Bill, in my view, is underrated as a writer, but possibly just a tiny bit overrated as a comedian, as you'll see in due course. Hello. Here we are then. The Spirit of Rill by Bill Ellis. Published when? 2004. Ten chapters, 160 pages. How many photographs is that? Over 250. Donkeys. We haven't had any donkey pictures so far in this series. This one looks pre-World War II. I don't remember those wicker chairs when we were kids. No, they are gone by then. You did ride on the donkeys, though, did you? Yes, very often. I asked the man, uh, can you hire these donkeys? Yes, he said, there's a little screw under the saddle. <laughs> Is that so? Yes, yes. Marine Lake Funfair. And that big slide just to the left of centre of the picture is the water chute. And that was the first ride ever at Marine Lake. What's that on the right? That is the Tunnel of Love. Is it true you met your wife in the Tunnel of Love? Yes, she was digging it. <laughs> and here's the other fun fair. Ocean Beach. When was this taken? 1966. And there's the main entrance in West Parade on the left. And over on the right, the big wheel. And at one time, there were two big wheels. One each side of the Ritz Ballroom. That's terrible. That sounds like okay. you it. Bathing beauties. No. What? what? Bathing beauty contest. At the open air bathing pool on the prom. We used to call the baths. When did the baths open? June the 5th, 1930. Mm. I've always liked pictures of girls dressing up and showing off. I don't know why, it's just one of those things, you know. Yes, yes. For many years there was a circus at Rill Pavilion in the summer seasons. Here's a photo of the 1960 company. The following year was their last performance. It was a traditional circus with animals of a kind that you don't see now, because we're more aware of the need for animal welfare. Is it true you once went for a job at the circus? Yes, I went for the job as a contortionist. The ringmaster said, well, how flexible are you? I said, well, I can't do Mondays and Wednesdays. Oh. May Day pictures are always popular. This one's from 1910. The May Queen was Miss Nancy Thomas, and the photo was taken outside the North Wales Hotel, now North Wales Inn, next to the police station in Wellington Road. Here's another building that still exists, the little theatre in Vale Road. When did that open? May the 18th, 1963. I was a member of the Little Theatre Company shortly after, when Joe Holroyd was in charge. And Joe said to me one day, you'll never be an actor. And he was right, I never was. Here are the famous Real Liberty players. When was this taken? 2002 for their Diamond Jubilee. And that production looks like A Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes, I was in a production of that once. People came from miles to see my bottom. Oh, it gets worse. <laughs> By way of contrast, I like this dramatic 1930s picture of a boat being pulled in from a rough sea. And to leave the seafront for a moment, here's a photo taken at the brickworks in Kevendy Road. When was this taken? 1960, shortly before demolition. And here's the big chimney that was such a landmark at the brickworks for many years. How high was that? 200 feet. And people used to say that Brickfields Pond was so deep you could stand the chimney in it. Well, we could go on all night. There's so many interesting pictures in this book, The Spirit of Rill by Bill Ellis. And this being December, we'd better send some season's greetings. So it's Merry Christmas from me and Happy New Year from him.